Hi, I'm Darren Moore with the New Centurion Program. We're here tonight at the Amway Boardroom in the beautiful DeBoss Center in downtown Grand Rapids on the Grand Valley State Campus. And we're fortunate enough to have join us tonight the preeminent living scholar on George Orwell, John Rodden. John has written six books on Orwell, The Politics of Liter Literary Reputation, The Making and Claiming of St. George Orwell. Also, Understanding George Orwell's Animal Farm, as well as Scenes from an Afterlife, The Legacy of George Orwell. George Orwell into the 21st Century, The Cambridge Companion to George Orwell, and, mo and most recently in 2006, he wrote the book Every Intellectual's Big Brother. It is really great to have you here tonight, John. Thanks for joining us on such short notice. Tonight we'll be talking about George Orwell, if he were alive today, the politics of selective quotation and how that relates to George Orwell. We'll start off with some introductory remarks from conservatism's historian on George Orwell. Folks that are conservative understand that George Orwell was not a conservative, but that he has a revered place inside of conservatism. Dr. Lee Edwards writes, if I can find the page, oh, let's see if I just keep it really still and only even notice the cut. Dr. Edwards writes about George, Wells, George Orwell's 1984. Newspeak, thought police, Big Brother is watching you. Few works of fiction have contributed more enduring phrases to American culture and politics than George Orwell's novel, 1984. Written, the author says, with a purpose to, quote, alter other people's ideas of the kind of society they should strive after, warning against ubiquitous, omnipotent government that molds the past and therefore the present, the 1984 is a passionate defense of individual freedom. John, what, what do you think is the thing that, that we need to understand about George Orwell here in 2009 now that he's been dead nearly 60 years? Even though George Orwell has died, he is more alive than most people who are today in terms of his relationship to current affairs and his impact on political events. No other writer in the English language has had the kind of impact on contemporary events as has George Orwell, now more than five decades since his death in 1950. Indeed, George Orwell's catchphrases from books such as Animal Farm 1984 have entered the political imagination and the cultural lexicon insofar as they've become bywords for understanding what the future may hold. Big Brother is watching you, Double Think, Newspeak. All of these and more are code words that have been used and abused by the left and the right for their own purposes. So that here we are about to enter the second decade of the 21st century and Orwell is only chronologically dead. That is, in terms of his historical and ongoing impact, he is indeed still alive today. In terms of Orwell's legacy, what we also need to understand is that 1984 failed as a prophecy and succeeded as a warning. That is, 1984 is not just a piece of science fiction, nor is it simply a political critique of Stalinism or Nazism, or both of them rolled into one as totalitarianism. That is to say that 1984 led, so to speak, to 1989. It led to the collapse of the Soviet Empire and the breakup of the Eastern European Communist States. Insofar as any book or any set of ideas can have a direct impact on political affairs, 1984 can be said to have done so. In fact, as an admonition to the intellectuals and policymakers in the early post-war era, 1984 proved to have decisive influence. It was, in a sense, 
a kind of Cold War cultural atom bomb that exploded on the literary and intellectual front with the same kind of dramatic power as did the bomb itself. And in a certain way, its consequences have been ever so great for, so to speak, intellectual deterrence. That is to say that 1984, because it was such a powerful warning, succeeded in changing the tide of public opinion. So that Orwell became the most famous literary cold warrior, but his reputation and the relevance of the book are not limited to the Cold War. In a certain sense, just as the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics is no more, and National Socialism is no more, and Orwell's book was indeed, to a great extent, a broadside against socialism and its abuses, all well and good. But the pertinence of the book and of Orwell are not limited to that. Otherwise, 1984 would be a book about the past. After all, this is the quarter century anniversary of 1984 in 2009. However, because 1984 is not just about Nazism or Stalinism or Communism or any of their variants, it is also about the abuse of language its boulderization, its manipulation, its corruption. It is also about the invasion of privacy and all of the insidious technologies that have been invented that bear our souls and impoverish our minds. It is also about all kinds of technical gadgetry that, while seeming to have such promise, eventually can undermine and rob us of our spirit. It is also about the little big brothers. That is, if indeed there are no Stalins, no Hitlers on the world scene, there are nonetheless the rogue states, the authoritarian leaders, the corrupt Robert Mugabe's or Kim's in North Korea, or Castro's in Cuba, and so on, and so on. That is, just because there is no great big brother with the two capital Bs does not mean that there are not small b big brothers. And they are not benign because they are small. Orwell, if he had lived, would be targeting them too as fine examples of leaders who are corrupted by power. And two of his greatest concerns were indeed the servile state and the danger of leadership turning into leader worship. And so, if we are to talk about Orwell's relevance for the 21st century, let us remember that insofar as this young century continues to witness so many of the abuses that he pointed out in Animal Farm in 1984, he and his work continue to be relevant. And so long as those abuses, ranging from the corruptions of language to the abuses of technology to the invasions of privacy, to the way in which authoritarianism can easily morph into oppressions that are far greater in a totalitarian direction. In all of these various ways, 1984 and Orwell continue to be pertinent in our own time. We conservatives are, we have find a lot of difficulty with George Orwell. One, that he was an atheist, and that even at, his, at the time of his death said that he was a devout socialist. Could you help us understand why uh, how, first of all, a devout socialist uh, could, could be so anti-communist? 